for noise spectroscopy. And other people that is involved in dynamical decoupling sequence by using NM NMR is the, the people that is mentioned there in the slide. So, um, well, the, the motivation are more or less common for our, all of us. What we want to try to do is to try to reduce the level of noise. We want to try to reduce the coherence in order to be able to uh, apply quantum error correction codes. So in present technologies, we, we still need to fight uh, against the coherence to try to achieve the, the, the level of noise required for quantum error correction code. One of the way to uh, attack that is by using decoupling methods and try to decouple the environment from the system. One promising technique is dynamical decoupling, and one of the properties that have dynamical decoupling is that we need access only to the system. So we need only to manipulate the system to effectively reduce the interaction with the, with the environment. In order to find the optimal dynamical sequences, it's very important to know what is the environment in detail. And this is our motivation, what we want to try to do is to try to, to, to measure the characteristic of our environment. So, well, uh, I, I will talk briefly because it was already refreshed today what is the dynamical decoupling and, for example, this is the pioneer uh, sequence that can be identified as a dynamical decoupling sequence that was the Han Echo experiment. And if we have a, 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 one, we have a, a spin and this spin is interactive with an environment, we look at the survival probability of our initial state as as a function of time when the, this spin is interactive with an environment, we'll see that this fidelity starts to decay with time. But if we apply a pi pulse that, that invert the orientation of the spin, what we do essentially is to change the system environment interaction, the sign of the system environment interaction, and we'll be, we will see an echo. So essentially what we do is to cancel the system environment interaction. And what, what uh, keeps is the, the dynamic of the environment. If the environment is a static, this echo will be perfect. But if the environment has some dynamic, the echo will not be, will not be perfect and, and the, the amplitude of the echo will decay. So essentially, in the picture of the runner, what is happening is that the, all the runners will not achieve the line at the same time. So the idea now is to try to, this, to, try to the, the decay of this echo will be determined by the spectral properties of the environment, and this is what I want to try to measure. So well, here, for example, you have the free evolution of our system, how the survival probability decay as a function of time, and if we apply uh, a, 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 a Haneco sequence and we measure the amplitude of the echo, we will get the black squares, and we can see that we can improve the coherence. So in, in order to characterize the, 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 the environment, let's assume that we have a, a pure defacing interaction, so the operator of our spin is the SZ operator, and let's assume that we are in some kind of semi-classical picture uh, where the effects of the environment on the, on the spin are some kind of random magnetic field given by this e fun e e function. So this is some random function that depends on time, and we can characterize this, uh, this fluctuating field uh, give, uh, produced by the environment by a correlation function. And if we produce a, a Fourier transfer of the correlation function, we can get the spectral density of our environment that will give the, 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 the different modes that our environment have. So um, now if we, let's consider that we have a dynamical decoupling sequence of two pulses, and let's consider the, the sign of the system environment interaction. At the beginning, the sign will be positive, so the sign will be equal to one, but when we apply a pulse, what we do is to change effect effectively the sign of the system environment interaction, and we have a minus one, until we apply the second, and we change again the sign to, to one. It was shown uh, some years ago by, by Kaufman and Kurinsky that the, we can, what, what we, there is some kind of filter function description, also Michael Virko was talking about that yesterday, uh, and Mir Davidson, that if we look now, now at the survival probability of our initial state as a function of time, that will decay with a, a, an exponential function. The argument of that exponential function is given by the overlap of the spectral density of the environment times the Fourier transform of this sine function of the system environment interaction. So this is what is called the filter function of our dynamical decoupling sequence. And if this filter is very good, that will, re, re, uh, that will filter some frequency mode of our environment. That, 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 a little of that was discussed yesterday by Neil Davidson and, and, and Michael Birko. So 
if, if we reduce this overlap, we can in, in, enhance the decoding and we can optimize the dynamical decoupling sequence. So if the, this is the key, if, that if we know the spectral density, we can try to find what is a suitable filter function to try to reduce this spectral density decay. So I will not worry about how to optimize that. What I want to try to do is to try to get the spectral density function for that exp expression. So this is a continuous integral expression, and if we, I want to do this inversion is a, is a difficult task. So what we do is to use some kind of tricks. So just to give you an example, let's consider that this green line is the spectral density function. This is some kind of Gaussian uh, spectral density function. I, I, I will assume that I am applying two pulses. This is a, a CPMG sequence, and I, I'm plotting here in a black line, which is the filter function of the CPMG sequence. So you can see that we have some kind of oscillation. If we, if we calculate the overlap between the black line and the green line, we will get the decay of our signal after one cycle. But this is a cycle of, of two pulses. What happens now if we repeat that cycle periodically? In the infinite limit, if we repeat a, 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 a cycle in an infinite number of times, we will get a, a periodic function. So the Fourier transform of the sign of the system environment interaction will be a periodic function. So the, transform, the, the Fourier transform will tend to the Fourier series. So for example, here I'm plotting the filter function after 40 cycles, and we are achieving more or less the regime that the Fourier transform is a Fourier series. And you can see the red line is almost, uh, uh, is a, is they have sync functions that are centered at the harmonics of the dynamical decoupling sequence. So it's related with the period of the dynamical decoupling sequence. So you can see that essentially now the filter function have some magnitude only for discrete values of the uh, of, of frequencies that they are related with the harmonic frequency of the dynamical decoupling sequence. So instead of having the continuous expression, the integral that I show, we will have a discrete sum of spectral densities for discrete values of the harmonics of the dynamical decoupling sequence. Another important property of, of that situation, when we are in this regime that the filter function is a sum of delta functions, what happens is now, now the decay of the survival probability will be an exponential decay. So we can know that we are already in that regime when we start to see that the survival probability is starting to decay exponentially. So now, what I can do is to choose different dynamical decoupling sequences, what I can do is to change the, the delay between pulses in such a way that they start to probe different, uh, uh, different discrete values of frequencies, and I try to choose, if I choose a, a, mi a, minim, a, a common multiple for different dynamical decoupling sequences, I can build some kind of linear system of equations. So the idea is, here I'm plotting different filter functions for different dynamical decoupling sequences, this axis, so all of them have different delay between pulses, and what I'm doing is to try to get all the harmonics commensurated between different dynamical decoupling sequences. So all of them have a, a, a minimum common multiple. If I do that, I can build this expression. I can write it like a, a linear system of equation where here I can plot the rate that I get for different dynamical decoupling sequence. Here is the spectral density function, and I can build a matrix that is related with the amplitude of the filter function at the, uh, at the harmonics of the dynamical decoupling sequence. Of course, this is assumed that have infinite numbers. So we need to make some kind of, of assumption to try to, to make that finite, but usually the spectral density function always decay with the frequency, so in some moment I can neglect the contribution of the tail, or if, if I know, if I can determine which is the tail, I can use that assumption to try to, to put in this expression and I can invert that. So let's assume uh, at the beginning that, that we neglect the contribution of the tail when we can neglect that, and we can make a finite linear system of equation. So then we can invert that, and we can find the, 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 the spectral density function if we measure the rate for different dynamical decoupling sequence. So this is the idea, this is the method, and, and this is how we can do noise spectroscopy using dynamical decoupling. So now I, I will give you some examples that we perform in, in, in NMR setup. So in the inset here, I'm showing you the survival probability of, uh, of an initial state as a function of the, of the number of cycles of CPMG sequences, the different colors are different delay between pulses. So depending on the delay between pulses, we have different <coughs> decay rates. You can see here, this is a log uh, uh, plot, so you can see here that we are already seeing the exponential decay, so we are already in the regime where the model that I show you works. And if we measure the decays 
for different delay between pulses. I can plot here the relaxation time of the decoherent time as a function of the pulse delays of different CPMG sequences. And you can see what well, they are the, the main plot, the, the, the square here, the blue square. And you can see if we start to reduce the pulse, the pulse, de the pulse delay, we start to see that the decoherent time starts to increase as expected. This region that saturates, this is because of, a finite, uh, of, a, of the real pulses that we have in the experiment. So let's forget about this part because this is a, ex 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 uh, the, we don't have ideal pulses. We cannot approximate our pulses by ideal, but in this region, the, we can consider that the pulses are more or less ideal. So now with these relaxations, I can build a linear system of equations, and then I can invert it, and I can get the spectral density function. So this is the, 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 the black square here in the, in the main plot. So here we have the spectral density as a function of the frequency. In this case, in our system, we can see that the spectral density function is have a power law dependence. Essentially, the, fac the factor of the power law is, is almost four. And we can see that the, the, the dependent of the power law that we have in the tail of the frequency is also the same that we have in the relaxation time as a function of the pulse delay. So already from here for a power law, yeah, yeah. for a power law uh, a spectral density function, we can get the, 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 the tail of the, our spectral density from the relaxation time. But I want to show you now some more interesting uh, examples. And what we do is now to, to, modif to, to modify the spectral density of our environment. So the, the blue lines here are the relaxation time as a function of the delay between pulses. This is the, the previous plot that I showed you before. And then what we do is to apply a, a, a radio frequency field to our environment. So what we, if the, we, our environment is a spin bath. And we, when we apply that field to the environment, what we do is to the spin presses with a given frequency. This is the, the frequency that is plotted there in the lesion. So essentially what we are doing is to put a dominant frequency in our spectral density function, and this is the, the, the dominant frequency that the spin are processing. So the different colors are relaxation times as a function of, different, uh, of, uh, as a, as a function of the delay between pulses for different modulating frequencies on, on our environment. So you can see now that the relaxation time changed drastically according to the modulating frequency that we have in our environment. In particular, let's see the black line here. You can see that for this delay between pulses, the decoherent time is very short. So what is happening here is that the pulse delay what we are using are putting the system on resonance with the environment. So instead of decoupling the environment, what we are doing is to optimize the exchange with the environment. So this is a condition that applying dynamical decoupling with this condition will not be a, a useful tool. So this is very important. This is showing you very important to know the spectral density of our environment to avoid this kind of situation. So now, if we have all this relaxation time, we can build a linear system of e equation. We can invert it, and we can get the spectral density function for the different situation. So different colors are the different spectral density function. And you can see that we have the dominant peak at the Rabi frequency of, uh, of, of, of the spin of the environment as expected, but something that I want to show you here is that there are, if you see there are some uh, solid symbols and empty symbols. So let's focus on the black line. You can see here that the empty symbols have some kind of maximum. The empty symbols are doing the assumption, as I showed you before, the, the, the filter function have contribution for different harmonics of the dynamical decoupling sequence. To obtain the uh, empty symbols, I'm considering that the main harmonic of our, our filter function is given the decay rate. So, but the solid is accounting for the, for the addition of all the harmonic of the dynamical decoupling sequence. If we don't consider the contribution for the secondary harmonic, we are observing here that we have some kind of maximum. This, is, this maximum is not real. That doesn't belong to the real spectral density function. This is because we have the, 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 the information that is here is not because of the main harmonic. It's because of the secondary harmonics. So if we neglect the contribution of the secondary harmonic, we are getting information of our spectral density that is not real. But if we consider the contribution, we can eliminate. And, and some recent, pro also I want to cite some recent progress, that uh, some recent works that they were also published recently. And in particular, for example, the last work was uh, the one that was given by uh, Neil Davidson yesterday. So with all of this, I, I show you how we can use dynamical decoupling for noise spectroscopy. And thank you very much.
Well, T1, as uh, Dieter show, is uh, the, 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 the time scale of T1 are very long compared to the time scale of this experiment. And concerning the, the pulse imperfection, what we, in the experiment that I show you, we use a CPMG sequence for the, uh, Dieter Sutter show also in his talk that CPMG sequence is, is robust against pulse imperfection if the initial state is longitudinal to the pulses. So if we do that, we can remove the pulse imperfection and, and essentially we, we already did some simulation and we can see that the behavior of the decay rate is almost compatible with ideal pulses. Uh, yeah, sure. The, the integral of the spectral density is conserved, sure. Hi, Gonzalo. Yeah. Great talk, thank you. Uh, I had a question that's a little out of sync with most of what we've talked about in this conference. And go back to early in your talk, you showed characterization of kind of the natural spectral density of your, uh, of your system, and it, I think it had one over omega to the 3.6 or something. And uh, that's very similar to what we saw using a superconducting magnet for uh, a penning trap experiment, we got one over omega to the fourth, and we were curious, I was curious, if you know where this comes from. Is it is flux diffusion in the uh, magnet or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that the, this is not a spin diffusion, because uh, to a spin diffusion, I think you have a, to, I don't remember now exactly, but I think it's a, it's a, a, power, it's a square power law. We, we don't know exactly what is that. Uh, we have some feedback from uh, Edward Feldman, if, or, I don't remember, but there are some, um, uh, some people that they have some theoretical models that they expect that the, the tail could be described by exponential times a power law, but I, I don't know exactly where it's coming, this factor. We have to explore that. All right. One last question before lunch. In the last case that you have uh, shown of a driven environment, basically to show that if you don't know the location of the, well, if you know the spectral density, decoupling can be harmful. Have you tried, that to me seems a very nice uh, uh, setting for trying out those randomized decoupling schemes because uh, back in 2005 with Manny and also with my uh, former postdoc, Lea Santos, I was arguing that uh, one instance where randomized scheme can be beneficial is they give you they can give you added robustness in the presence of uncertainty in uh, the environment characterization. So on yeah. average, you could see. Uh, so you mean to, to, to it, but you mean on average of different spectral densities? Or no, for no, a, no, 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 no. The average performance density. over uh, in randomized decoupling, you mm, at each see, point in time the, you apply uh, okay. or not apply. If and you don't you know the optimal uh, exactly. time for decoupling. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah, we didn't think about that, but it's a yeah, it's a good idea. Okay, let's thank the speaker and all the speakers of the session.